Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now this is going to be on two different channels. So for those of you watching on my main channel, this is Jaeger262. And if you're watching this on the Modeling Edge, welcome back and thank you for joining us. I'm of course Nick. And the reason this is on two is because if any of you have been following Jaeger262 on Instagram, you'll know that I am just starting to get into the RC hobby. And the reason that that's on the Modeling Edge is because as you can see with the WPL Deuce and a Half, the M35, on top of this box, I am also painting and tweaking a lot of my RC projects, just like I would any scale models. So since I'm going to be doing that with what's in this very big box, I decided to put it on both accounts. So first things first, the M35 on top is in 1 16th scale. So for anybody who doesn't know, this is a pretty big scale, quite large in armor. You can kind of see in the background. Um, this is what 135th scale looks like next to it. It's huge. And what we have in the box is even bigger. It is a 112th scale military vehicle. So more on that very soon. Let me open up the box, which barely fits on my desk. So please bear with the video and we'll go from there. Okay, so out of the box, incredibly large. This is HGRC or HG Models P602, the US 6x6 explosion proof vehicle. Of course, you know the real vehicle as the Cougar MRAP or mine resistant ambush protected armored car. As you can see, it is 112th scale. So it is as big as the Star Wars Black Series figures in the background there. They are all 112th scale. So this is a massive, massive vehicle. And I got the pro version. And what that means is, and I'll get more into that when I get through the unboxing, is that on my WPL, I got the normal basic one and I got the normal basic kit. They come as model kits. This is obviously already built, but I will show you all that later. There is some assembly required for a lot of the stuff on top. But... All RC cars usually come with plastic, uh, plastic drive shafts, axles, plastic gears for the motor, and they don't really last as long. Uh, basically, the pro version of this vehicle just replaces it all with metal. That's how RC tanks are done and even how WPL or 116 scale trucks are done. Uh, pro just means metal. Another benefit of having the pro version here, though, is that it comes with a full light kit already installed. Of course, you could buy that upgrade but all the lights work. It is, I believe, a 12 channel radio. So really cool stuff. So let me get this out of the box and let's see how massive it really is. And I've seen other people do reviews of HGRCs. Apparently the boxes they come in are usually just big carrying cases or like really large pelican cases. Uh, this just comes in a styrofoam block. So, yeah, I definitely got right close to the camera. things first you will need your own charger and battery for this vehicle right out of the box and so if you don't have one of those it's not rtr well it is rtr you get your own transmitter everything and it is large so here's the instruction manual get details and behind this that off, is all of your extra parts Then there's a lot of them. You got your oil to make the smoke effects. It's a tiny bottle because it's glycerin. You have the shield for the heavy MG, the MG2. You have stairs for the rear of the vehicle. Oh, let me make sure I'm getting that on camera. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is the antenna for the anti-mine device. You get four extra metal antennas in the back. A tool kit with zip ties for any wiring, as well as some spacers and a wrench. Extra screws. A USB charger for, I'm assuming, the remote. I'm not entirely sure. Um, a little chain to hold your transmitter. That's usually just for aircraft 
Uh, but this radio that it has, the transmitter it has, is actually really huge, like an aircraft radio, so that does help. And then a tool set, a couple of hex drivers in various sizes. The instruction booklet is quite thick, and as you can see here, these are vinyl decals. That's what's normal for most RC vehicles. So they go on like stickers, and what you do is you peel the top part off, and it leaves a very, very thin, almost water slide look to it, which is very nice, and they have a lot of them. You get a U.S. Army markings, Navy, and Marine Corps markings for this particular vehicle. So let's get all of this out of the way. Oh, I forgot. Here's the actual M2 50 cal. It's actually really nicely detailed with an ammo belt. So, all this is going to get repainted. When I do it, that's what's going to be on the modeling edge. And here's another piece of its electronics array for dealing with mines and ICs. And there it is, still in the box, and it is absolutely massive. Also, like I was saying, here is the 12 channel transmitter, or 16 channel, I suppose, so it is really huge. And that is why you're gonna want, probably, to have something to help you hold it. If I can actually lift this thing out of the box. Now, the weight of this vehicle is about 10 kilos. For those of us in the States, that's approximately 13 pounds? 14 pounds? Somebody in the rest of the world can tell you better, but 10 kilos is as much as this thing weighs. It looks really impressive out of the box. So, again, this is 112th scale, which means. That's how big the real one is in real life. Alrighty, so it's coming on the wheels. We are, it is a crawler, so the wheels are soft. And only problem right out of the box on my particular vehicle is the windshield is really scratched up there, which is okay because I will be painting the windows in the nice green color, or I should say anti shine color. All these parts uh, come unattached. This is where the four antennas for the back go. It attaches across the back here, and this piece goes right up front, right here, as part of the searchlight. Yeah, this thing is really impressive. So, I'm gonna try to do it from as far away as I can, but let me just bring the camera in. Like I said, this is quite a large vehicle. Alrighty. So yeah, all metal. A really cool part about the HG stuff is all the doors work. They have little latches, and you just pull up on the latch. I can just get it to operate, which I'm almost getting it. There we go. So it twists like this, opens the door, and you get a full interior with this. Now, fortunately, there's no real way to get in there. They do have decals for the side panels. But there's no real way to get in here and really paint that up as nicely as I want. Let's see if I can really show you guys the whole interior. Lighting's kind of bad. Uh, each one of these bins also opens. If I can just, this is why reading the instruction manual is so important. Um, turret fully traversable. It has its own servo in there, so I will not be turning it by hand. So that way you turn it from the remote. These doors here also open. I guess I'll open this one first. Yeah. And so this is actually where the battery goes, right in here. I can just slide that out. Yeah. So there's your battery tub there. And like I said, full interior. Not really going to be able to see it that well. Um, let me see if I can't find a flashlight real quick or something. Okay, so no flashlight, but hopefully you can see it with the lamp. Full cargo space, troop compartment, 
nothing on the shelves, no electronic array there. Again, this is where the battery sits right in here. And you can see the electronics going up to the servo right up. Well, if I can lift it right up there, servo for the turret. So we'll close that back up for now. And all these are metal, which is really nice. And then, of course, where the smoke effects come. I think you put the oil in here, but I will tell you more. When I get the instruction manual out, smoke comes out of the muffler. I do believe this hatch on top opens, but there's no actual access to the vehicle below. Let me close the door. So, flipping it over. All metal gear, all metal drive shafts. The metal springs, shocks, metal drive bar. You have leaf springs here, the really big ones. Small, well, smaller than most scale crawlers. Most scale crawlers are in 110 scale. So this is actually a small vehicle, believe it or not. But because it is a six by six, it is really, really massive. And the last super cool detail about this vehicle that I saw a lot of people really excited about was the engine. So if I can do this. There we go. It has a fully working engine. So once it turns on, all this stuff will start rolling over or turning over. And both of the panels on top open up so you can get a top down view of the engine. You can just do it again. There we go. And see the whole engine. See the engine there and then the rest of it there with the electronics so it is a fully detailed 12 cylinder engine just like the actual gm engine that is inside the real mrap and last but not least like i said all the lights on this vehicle do work but there is a channel to activate this winch which is a real winch and the gears and everything for that are stored right back here Oh, you can't really see it. Sorry, this thing is really big. So we're right under here with metal wire. So I'm going to, one, read the instruction manual. And then I'm going to power it up. And we're going to see what it looks like with all the lights, all the stuff going. Alrighty, so that was actually really loud. Uh, the startup for this, while the radio is together the car and all of its sounds and functions turn on actually turned on the smoke it's all good i put a few of the components on just so that way you can see what they look like uh the booklet actually is the kit setup for this i did not know it was sold as a kit in parts and now that i'm looking at the vehicle it's actually apparent that yes somebody did put this together as a kit so this thing just kind of flashes the whole time and here is the radio so this is I forgot. One of these is for lights. Yeah, there we go. One of these turns it on. And then this one's engine. This is kind of the engine. I'll turn that around so you can see it. You can see the engine going. Pretty cool. That's the winch. Oh, I'm sorry. That's it. This one here is the winch down, up. Servos. And then I really, this is throttle. I'm not going to push that. This one's throttle. This is steering. Don't want to do that while it's on the desk just yet. So now that we have everything ready to go, let's put it down. Whew. Alrighty, so it's on the floor. I'm gonna adjust where my camera is and hopefully we're gonna get some shots of this thing running. I'm gonna do a two minute test run and then from there, try to figure everything out. Last thing though, that USB charger is to charge the radio or transmitter. So you could just plug it into a wall after you fill it up with the six double A's that it requires. Okay, so it uh, I changed it into low gear from high gear. Uh, this thing still goes incredibly fast. It accelerates super fast for a crawler. I did not expect that. 
Uh, to control the turret, it's just this button here, and you just left and right. Smoke is actually on a switch. So it burned out of its, there it goes. You can kind of hear the heater slowly puffing out smoke. To accelerate, it does this, it'll start the engine sound, very loud. Oh, wow, okay, so there's something fun I didn't know. It actually comes with working turn signals. Down to the right. Brake. That's brake light. Ooh, oops. Uh, normally it wouldn't move with the brake on. Oh, no. okay. Light switch should turn on all the lights. So far it's just turning on the flashing lights. So yeah, light switches are not working yet. Um, you know, left and right cut over so you can turn them different ways if you want. Switch the control, same thing with forward and backwards. So yeah, that's it, basically. So when the brake's on, you see how it went. It shouldn't move, so brake's off. That's not moving, hold on. Yeah, so let me take it into gear, and then from there, whew, there so you can kind of lock it up, and that way it doesn't move everywhere. So I'm going to wait for the sound to turn off, I'm going to come back, and figure out the light suites, I can show you what all these headlights look like when they're just turned on. Right now it only turns on for certain functions. Okay, so running it in the garage now, because I couldn't get the smoke to stop. And glycerin is no fun to breathe indoors. Uh, the problem with the lights was that the switch only activates whether or not the strobe is on. The lights themselves only operate for specific actions. This flip, this switch here is for the horn. There's that. And there's the startup. And now you're going to see how fast this thing can really accelerate in low gear. Quite fast. It is really fast for a car with a really impressive turn radius. I'm going to shift it into the other gear for crawling. Alright, there we go. So now it's a little bit easier to control. So there's the blinkers again, the direct noise. The brake lights are always on. The headlights only come on when it's actually moving forward. Get that turret straight. This thing is really, really loud. So I don't have anywhere to really crawl it right now. I plan to do some more crawling later in the week with it and see what it can actually do, but let's see how well it takes the grass and how well the metal gears can actually hold up, as smaller WPL trucks can't really do it. Alrighty, so just some light crawling. The grass is not really something that you typically want to crawl or see over this face. This thing does look just fine. Unfortunately, for a Florida or a Mad, not too many hills or rocks or anything. 
they just have a lot of grass and mulch. But this thing is absolutely fast. It's just, it has incredible speed and size. And as you can hear, it is really loud. So for now, I think that's going to conclude it for this video. Let me shut the car off. That's going to be it for this video for now. So as always, thank you so much for watching. And please subscribe to either Jaeger 262 or the Modeling Edge, whichever account you're watching this on, if you want to see more about this, because I will be repainting all the windows, touching up some of the parts like these on the engine hood here, where the kit was actually put together a little roughly, repainting most of this. And as I go through it and find some good places to crawl, uh, along with the other RC guys and hobby guys that I work with, I'll have a lot more videos of this coming out, but overall, really impressive vehicle, really happy with it right now, and it is absolutely monstrous. The upgraded version, the one with the lights, the smoke, the metal, is worth it. I don't know what the standard version looks or feels like, but so far, just for this, absolutely amazing. Love every bit of it, and highly recommend it to anybody who's just getting into RC and likes military vehicles like I do. So, as always, again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.